I edited this photo in Affinity Photo using frequency separation and this is what it looks like before I did my frequency separation and this is what it looks like after. So if you would like to see that, definitely keep watching this video. First thing I'm going to do is open up my photo, my raw photo. I'm going to go into file, click on open and select the photo that I want to edit. I'm using raw photo for this. I don't know if you can do frequency separation on a JPEG. Anyway, once that's open, it opens up in this develop persona. This is similar to like when you open up your raw photo in Photoshop or Lightroom. Here you can do all your basic color edits or basic adjustments like uh, exposure and whatnot. But this is what the picture looks like. So this is the photo persona, the develop persona rather. These are all the, this is the panel where you make all your adjustments with your contrast, brightness, exposure and a bunch of other things that you'd see in Lightroom or in the Photoshop raw app. I think it's called Bridge. I can't remember, but that's what that is. And for me, I like to just pretty much scroll down and make change my color profile like I would do in say Lightroom, for example. So if I click on that, I'm just going to switch to the Adobe RGB. You, you can use whatever one you want. You can decide not to do this, but I just like to do this. It's just, I'm just used to that. So once I'm done with that, I go on and make all the adjustments that I want to make. So working on my highlights, shadows, uh, vibrant, saturation, all those elements that you tend to work with when you're doing your editing before you go into like your fre your frequency separation. So some people like to do this after, but I think doing it before makes sense. It's up to you at the end of the day. So once I'm done with all these changes, I click on develop and it brings me into the photo persona where I can now do my frequency separation. I duplicate the photo and then I go on to click on the filters at the top. So under filters, your African separation, this is so straightforward to be honest compared to what you have to do in Photoshop to get to this point. You have to create actions for that. Anyway, you want to ensure that there is enough texture on the left side and enough color on the right side. So the right side is going to be blurry and the left side is going to be textured. Basically, you're going to adjust the radius based on how much texture you want to see. This is a close up picture. So I like to see as much texture as possible. So I'm going to increase in that to about six or five they're about that works for me but you can adjust it some people use like nine ten it really depends on what you want to do or what you're working on if this was like a big portrait and you know as a full body i would definitely be doing like two or one in fact but six works fine for me for this photo sometimes color gets in the way and gets into the other side especially when you're working with makeup and i don't think you should bother yourself too much about that it tends to happen so just make sure it's not too much color Click apply and then you have your high frequency and your low frequency. Your low frequency is all your colors, high frequency is all your textures and now we can start our editing basically. So before we go into that, I'm going to first of all duplicate my low frequency layer. Once I duplicate that, it's I'm going to go ahead and group all my layers. So Ctrl J to duplicate the low frequency and then click hold down your shift key click the low frequency at the bottom group everything together so you have your you can easily toggle to see your before and after once you start doing your edits so i'm going to turn my background off still locked in as it has been and then we're going to work on the high frequency layer I'm going to grab your clone brush tool and begin your working our Reduce the size of our brush so it matches whatever you want to fix. Grab our Alt key, hold down the Alt key, sample from a clean area. What you want to do when you're doing this is ensure that you're sampling from similar areas. So you can see this part is like spray smooth. If I had like a bump here, I'll find something that's around here to fix it. I will not come here in this space that looks heavily textured and use this sample this to fix somewhere here. That's pretty much the point. So I want to sample from somewhere that's here like this and then say I want to go fix somewhere here. That's not going to work. But if, I, if I'm sampling from, I can use somewhere here to fix somewhere here. So make sure that wherever you're fixing, wherever you're sampling from is around the area that you're trying to fix, basically. So this, for instance, hold down my Alt key, you sample, you change it to this plus sign thing, and then you fix, cover it. Do that again a few times till you're done with all the obvious big bumps that you have to fix just doing that sample fix sample fix 
this looks closer to that's the sample I'm actually using my alt key sampling all through the picture and fixing different bumps that are all over the picture so you don't have to do this for every single bump that you see because some part of it is just really texture and you don't want it to be too much so your picture doesn't the face doesn't look too smooth or almost plasticky you kind of want to see some skin anyway i on i turn on my uh, low frequency layer occasionally just to see where we are at and this is pretty much what the finished work looks like so far i can turn toggle this on and off just to see where i'm at now we can focus on the low frequency layer i'm going to grab my paint mixer brush this is similar to your mixer brush in photoshop i'm starting with my flow at 25 and my strength about 5 or 6. you should start off slow so you can build on these settings as you edit the picture so what is going to happen with this one is that we're going to be mixing similar areas so you can see that this light is we're going to make the brush as big as possible to fit just that light piece and just go ahead and mix. make sure this auto play brush is on i still tend to click on this because i am a bit scared so i just mix this way mix like colors that are related together just like so like your changes might not be super obvious that's why you start slow and then you increase your strength as you go if you just start off with like something big you might end up with a mess so this there's like a shadow like a mid-tone here so i mix that as well clean the brush when i want to move to a different area it's a different area it's like a shadow because it's much darker the idea is just to mix your highlights together, your mid-tones together, and your shadows together. You can listen to this explanation again for the face area. In and mix in. I know sometimes it's hard to see what's happening, so let me use this face as my sample. Okay. This face has like a bit of mix of color, so when you're mixing, you mix this face the same way. You mix this one the same way. You mix, you reduce your brush. Mix this blush area the same way, mix this highlight the same way, mix this one together, mix this one together. Basically, that's how you do your mixing. So, I'm going to increase my to about seven, right? And then my brush would be the size of this area I want to mix. So, so this area now. So, let's start mixing. to click on my clean brush and I'm going to mix this area on its own. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest of the face. Just making sure that I'm mixing highlights together, mid-tones together, shadows together. So it might be subtle but this is where we are coming from. This is where we are at. You can see the changes here. If I clear this, this is where we are coming from. This is where we are at with the mix. This is where we are coming from. This is where we are at with the mix. Do you see? So I'm going to go ahead and just do that again for the rest of the body. I know I've done this before, but just touching it up again because I increased the strength a little. So just to make a little more subtle difference. So now that we are done with that, I can turn on all the layers that are inside the group and then close the group sort of so we can see before and after let me zoom in so zoomed in i can close the group and then toggle the group on and off this is what it looks like before this was the original picture and if i go back and i turn the group back on like so this is what it looks like after this is what the skin looks like after this is pretty much what frequency separation is in affinity photo i didn't bother increasing my flow again i started off with the 25 and i pretty much stuck to it I did another photo where I had to increase it, but you have to do it based on the picture. I just went in there to just adjust this stray hair that was around the face, just around the brow, and with my clone brush, and that was it. 
So that's it for frequency separation in Affinity Photo. I finally replicated my workflow from Photoshop into Affinity Photo and I'm excited for all the other things that I'll be able to try here. See you guys next time.